Okay, rewinding to show you what could have happened. We'll still make 10 with these two and we'll be okay, but these are the suspic suspicious two, which should lead to our demise, I believe. I made up my mind I would pair up with Beatrix and Nicholas. They were the first ones to approach me, and despite the captain's warning, I had no choice but to trust them. Nicholas and Beatrix stood at the end of the hall engaged in a private conversation. Hey, Beatrix, Nicholas, does your offer to combine still stand? I've decided that I want in. We knew we could rely on you. No one as charming as you could possibly betray us. Isn't that right, brother? Nicholas nodded in reply. We're glad you're on board. All we need to do is perform one little transaction. Then we can go and relax. It'll all be over soon. I know this is a weird question given that we're about to go put our lives in each other's hands. But I've heard rumors that you two might not be telling me the whole truth. That bitch! It was the captain, wasn't it? That's just like her. She's so desperate, she'll stoop to sabotaging other players' chances by casting aspersions against their character. If barging in there didn't forfeit my place in the game, I would go and give her a piece of my mind and my fist while I'm at it. Right square in her face. Whoa, Sarah brought it up. Beatrix and Kimiko don't exactly have the best relationship, but never fear, friend. We didn't spend four days slaving over you just to get you killed three days later. You're right to put your faith in us. The moment the door whooshed open, my arm nearly shot off its socket. I was yanked down the hall by Beatrix running at full sprint. Nicholas was surprisingly fast, fanning off anyone who wished to initiate a transaction by using his lengthy lap coat as a makeshift barricade. When push came to shove, the Vogels meant business. Very well, please enter. You'll have ten minutes to complete your transaction, at which time you will be forcibly removed from the dining room. Dining hall. As soon as we entered the room, the door closed behind us with a loud metallic clang. Nicholas strode up to the primary terminal, placed his hand on the holographic display, and waited for us to take our places at the other terminals. Couldn't we have at least discussed who should be in control of the primary terminal? Yeah, it doesn't particularly matter for this type of transaction. Combining cards is our only available option here. Trading and giving are both limited to one-on-one -on -one transactions. I guess you're right. Let's get on with it, shall we? We only have ten minutes. I made my way over to the secondary terminal opposite Beatrix. Once I stepped in front of the terminal, the front and side walls prevented me from seeing anything. All my attention was focused on the screen. Whatever happened here would determine my future. The sensation of placing my hand on something that wasn't physically there felt very surreal. i have been expecting to feel a slight electric vibration when I placed my palm against its surface, but there was nothing. My terminal beeped as my handprint was verified as my own. The terminal screen changed, displaying my name and a card number, a lonely five. On my screen I could see the word combine light up as it was selected in a as it was selected. In a moment the readout changed to five plus Beatrix plus Nick Beatrix plus Nicholas, and it was done. We were officially allied. Congratulations! Your transaction has been completed. Judgment will occur in 44 minutes. Thank you for participating in the deletion game. We exited the dining hall beneath the withering judgmental stares of the other players. For some reason, I couldn't bring myself to meet Kimiko's gaze. Thank you. We appreciate your help. Beatrix winked at me slyly. We owe you one, sailor. I'm glad we could help each other out. Try to get some rest. Doctor's orders. We'll see you with judgment. I wasn't sure how he expected me to rest, considering how little time we had before the final results were announced. Extra, extra! B sharp C on rooftop! Ahem. So, it's a tie. So, this will give us a moment. So, that tells you the captain had the 9 card, and I don't remember the other dude's name. Who had the 1. So, we have. Two, three, four, and one making ten. The ten card, the nine card. And this was my big question. When you go over ten, does it reset down to eight, or does it still stay at eighteen and we automatically beat the eight? Time seemed to slow to a halt as I read the scoreboard in terror. Blood rushed through my eardrums, drying out all sound. My body grew cold and numb as I discovered how it felt to be trade for the first time in my life. I had the lowest number on the board. Not really. I was going to die. But I... We only just met him! We can't lose our new friend already! Nicholas put his hand on my shoulder and leaned in close. I was too shocked to react, 
This couldn't be real. This couldn't be happening. I could feel his breath on my ear as he whispered. I'd say it was nothing personal, but that would be a lie. You killed our father. Now you'll get the punishment you deserve. Nicholas meandered back to his sister, whose eyes never left mine. Her lips were contorted into a demented smirk. Congratulations, everybody! You'll all live to fight again. Everybody except the new guy, that is. As the loser of round two, you must now submit yourself to the method of execution of my choosing. Let's spend the wheel of fatality to see what gruesome punishment lies in store for you. Ooh, I can hardly wait. With a flourish, die conjured a sizable holographic wheel split up into labeled sections. I barely got a chance to read all of them before die passed judgment. Gravity, airlock, oxygen, incineration, and spacewalk. Each one sounded more ominous than the last. Within seconds, Dai gave the wheel a hefty spin and the sections of the wheel blurred into one another. Make it a long, slow one, won't you? Dai? My eyes were fixed on the wheel as it gradually slowed, tick, tick, ticking its way to a standstill as the arrow circled the dial, finally coming to a rest on... Incineration. Please know anything but that! Perfect. Well done. No time like the present. Let's head on down to the furnace room, shall we? I won't go, I won't! Feel free to refuse, but for every second you push the issue, I'll be decreasing the amount of oxygen flowing into the room. That's gonna make me even harder to burn, won't it? With that in mind, could we speed things along a bit? Any help here would be greatly appreciated. Beatrix shot forward and clamped her hands around my waist in a vice-like grip, catching me completely off guard. I struggled to free myself from her grasp, but Nicholas soon followed his sister's lead, grabbing hold of my arms and twisting them behind my back. He thrust me towards the door and proceeded to frog march me down to the f furnace room at a brisk pace. I don't even know what frog march is. I fought against Nicholas's iron grip the whole way down to the furnace room. Even when faced with my own imminent death, as an, an instinctive primal urge to survive prevented me from giving in. It didn't matter if I knew that Nicholas was stronger. I was desperate, fighting for my life with the ferocity of a wounded beast. Cowed, but still dangerous. It didn't take long for us to arrive at the furnace room. No amount of kicking or screaming had managed to slow our progress. Nicholas threw open the glass door, shoved me unceremoniously into the scorching heat of the fire, and shut the door in my face. My skin instantly began to sting upon entering, bursts of pain shooting through my nerves as the blaze licked at my legs. Company? Fall in! Huh, even a little girl saluting. The tongues of flame had begun to blacken my uniform as Kimiko shouted. Searing pain jolted through me as violent, blistering welts started forming on my exposed skin. Research officer, you have served honorably aboard the Everett during your short time with us. Company, salute. Liar, liar, pants on fire unlocked. The entire line saluted in unison except for the Vogels. The pair of them simply fixed me with a wicked glare. The shadows cast by the flames played over their faces, lending them a demonic aspect. The flames danced across my skin, bringing with them a new bout of torment. Animalistic howls racked my body as I shrieked, unable to bear the pain any longer. My charred skin was starting to slough off, separating from the muscle underneath and dry flakes that were virtually indistinguishable from burnt scraps of paper. I clamped my eyes shut, sickened at the sight of myself. Keep in mind, realistically, he would have lost vision already. The sheer heat of the room would have dehydrated his eyes to the point where they could not stay open if he wished to continue using them. And I should also mention, he should not really be able to scream at that temperature, it scorches lungs and that would be it. The putrid smell of my own burning hair and flesh mixed with the smoke pouring off of my flaming body, forcing its way down my throat and scalding my lungs. I began to cough violently in a vain attempt to expel the smoke from my lungs, struggling for breath between fits of coughing. Like a fish out of water, I desperately gasped for air, but there was nothing left to breathe amid that blazing inferno. Some part of my mind dimly realized that I was asphyxiating. The disgusting squelch and sizzling sound of fat and muscle roasting as it cooked suddenly seemed so far away. As my consciousness faded to black, the last thing I ever heard was the sound of my agonized screams, ricocheting throughout the room, wordlessly pleading for death. You have died! So there you go, the first of the alternate routes. So, load game real quick, this is the... Next junction point. I don't know how I'm gonna do this just yet. We'll we'll figure it out as we go.
But you got to see what happens, and hopefully you enjoyed the little barbecue. I'm the Hero of Light, thanks for watching, and goodbye.